This is Real News Media TV, coverage you can trust. Please like, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates. Partially burnt body of Portland woman found with chop wounds. The partially burnt body of a 60-year-old farmer, Cynthia Hines, was found with chop wounds at her farm in St. Margaret's Bay, Portland, this morning. The discovery was made by a passerby shortly after 8 a.m. It is further reported that Heinz feet and hands were severed and that the body had chop wounds to the face, back and chest. Also, the lower part of the body had extensive burns. It is believed that Heinz, a plantain farmer, may have left her house shortly after 5.30 a.m. to her farm on a property owned by the Airport Authority of Jamaica in St. Margaret's Bay, where she was attacked, chopped and set ablaze. A large crowd descended on the scene. Investigations into the incident continues. Indicom probing fatal shooting by police on Maxfield Avenue. The Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, is probing the fatal shooting of a man by the police on Maxfield Avenue in Kingston on Tuesday. A 17-year-old boy was also shot and an illegal firearm seized. About 4.30 p.m., the police went to a restaurant on Maxfield Avenue in search of wanted men. The cops reportedly confronted two men at the back of the property. It's alleged that one of the men pulled a weapon and attempted to use a teenager as a human shield. A member of the police team reportedly opened fire, hitting the two individuals. The man was pronounced dead at hospital and the teenager admitted. A pistol was reportedly seized in the incident. Farmer killed on the job in St. Elizabeth. A manhunt has been launched by the police for a gunman who shot and killed a farmer in the Haunton era of St. Elizabeth on Wednesday. The deceased has been identified as 32-year-old Alex Morgan of Haunton District. Initial reports are that, sometime after 1 p.m., Morgan and other men were working on his farm when they were approached by a gunman. The woodlum opened fire, hitting Morgan several times before fleeing the scene. The wounded farmer was assisted to the hospital, where he was pronounced dead. No motive for the gun attack has yet been established by the police. Investigations are ongoing into the incident. Huge fire brigade effort to save Heidel schools. Some 39 firefighters from Spanish Town and neighboring stations have succeeded in extinguishing a blaze that destroyed the administrative building of the Heidel Group of School Complex at Ferry along Mandela Highway on the St. Catherine St. Andrew border on Thursday morning. It took a major effort by the Jamaica Fire Brigade to contain the blaze and to prevent what could have been a much more devastating and costly incident. Five fire engines and two other trucks were dispatched to deal with the blaze. The progress report said that the fire was confined to the main building, a representative of the Jamaica Fire Brigade told the news. Julian Davis Buckle, superintendent of the Jamaica Fire Brigade, told the news that the damage has been estimated at $50 million. This is while another senior JFB officer said the risk assessment damage has been estimated at $150 million, meaning that that amount of property was at risk of being destroyed by the blaze. Students on the school compound who were sitting the Caribbean Secondary Examination Council examinations were reportedly affected by the blaze. Also, summer classes among other students were disrupted during the blaze. The cause of the fire is unknown at this time. No one was injured in the blaze, but the school's administrative office was destroyed, said a school official on the complex. Reports are that, close to 8 a.m., teachers and students were stopped in their tracks after they turned up for classes. From I was heading to school, I saw smoke coming from the direction of the school and started to worry, said one student. The incident triggered nervous moments for some parents who rushed to the institution to check on their children. 17-year-old shot dead in Westmoreland. A 17-year-old boy was killed in Westmoreland on Tuesday night. He has been identified as Leonardo Long, a resident of Smithfield. About 8.30 p.m., residents heard gunfire. The body of the teenager was found on a dirt track during a search Wednesday morning.
Clergyman suggests regulating church leaders. Reverend Harley Perrin, Costas of Westmoreland, has called for church's development of a regulatory framework to monitor persons who seek to lead a congregation. Reverend Perrin made a call in light of recent reports of pastors being arrested for sexual offenses. Reverend Perrin, who is also the leader of St. Peter's Anglican Church in Petersfield, Westmoreland, said the request may have negative repercussions for the church, however, an intervention is needed. In previous media reports, Reverend Perrin had called for the government to implement such a system, but now he admits the onus of responsibility would not necessarily be on the government because we wouldn't want the government to take over the church as it were. He suggested the church itself needs to put checks and balances in place to ensure its continued integrity and a sustenance in the future. Reverend Perrin said the majority of persons affiliated with the church who have got themselves into trouble with the law are self-proclaimed pastors who are the ones who would not have had the kind of training and the kind of accountability which would be demanded of them if they were belonging to something that regulates them. PNP activist in defamation case guilty of contempt of courts. People's National Party activists Karen Cross and Natalie Stack have each been fined $750,000 for contempt in the Supreme Court. Justice Chester Stamp has given them 14 days to pay the fine or serve six months in prison. The women are defendants in a defamation lawsuit filed by the party's general secretary, Dr. Dayton Campbell. They found themselves on the wrong side of the law after breaching a court order to remove the contentious information from their social media accounts and not to repost the information. The defamation case arose after both women made posts alleging serious criminal conduct by Campbell. The allegations were investigated by the Jamaica Constabulary Force, which in April said it found no supporting evidence. According to the police, Cross, despite giving a formal statement, did not provide any evidence to substantiate the claims, nor was she able to provide any person interested in making a complaint against Campbell. However, Cross has insisted that she has evidence to support her claims. Police probing fatal shooting on Rodney Road in St. Andrew The St. Andrew South Police are probing the fatal shooting of 31-year-old Stephen Francis, a construction worker of Rodney Road. Residents reportedly heard a gunfire shortly after midnight Wednesday and called the police. Mr. Francis's bullet-riddled body was found near his home. The St. Andrew South Division has recorded more than 100 murders, the highest in the country. Careless robber gets a nine-month prison sentence. A 23-year-old robber who was nabbed by the police after leaving his conditions of bail book at the scene of a crime in exchange, Ochorius in February, was sentenced to nine months in prison when he appeared in the St. Anne's Bay Parish Court on Tuesday. Javier Amos pleaded guilty to charges of housebreaking and larceny. The police report that on Monday, February 1, the complainant, said to be a pastor, locked and left his property about 12.15 p.m. When he returned, sometime after 4 p.m., he realized that his house had been broken into and ransacked. The thief escaped with U.S. $900, a gray laptop, and other items totaling more than U.S. $2,200. The robber also took Jamaican $11,100 and a gold-plated watch valued at Jamaican $6,000. To leave your house and return to see that someone went inside is a gross violation, Senior Parish Court Judge Stanley Clark who presided over the case, told Amos's attorney, who had pleaded for his client to be given a reduced sentence. Amos, a landscaper of an Ochorius address, was picked up on February 5 and charged after investigations proved that a conditions of bail book found on the crime scene was his. He had denied being involved in the burglary and told the court that he had lost the book. The court was not told what Amos had been charged with when he was granted bail. Four additional COVID-19 deaths, 138 new cases. Jamaica has recorded four more COVID-19 fatalities 
pushing the tally to 1,167. Those who have died are a 57-year-old man from St. James, a 75-year-old man from St. James, a 72-year-old woman from St. James whose death was previously under investigation, and a 64-year-old man from Kingston and St. Andrew. Two more cases have been recorded as coincidental deaths, increasing the tally to 162. The Ministry of Health says one of the cases was under investigation. Meanwhile, there were 138 new cases, with ages ranging from 4 days to 97 years, pushing the total to 51,542 with 3,248 being active. Of the new cases, 85 are women and 53 are men. Kingston and St. Andrew account for the majority of the new infections, with 51 cases, followed by St. James with 32, and then St. Elizabeth with 17. A total of 1,561 tests were conducted. The country's positivity rate stands at 13.8 percent. In the meantime, there were 22 more recoveries, increasing the total to 46,773. Some 122 persons are in hospital, with 34 being moderately ill and 16 critically ill. 10 persons are in government quarantine, while 43,802 are at home. Please remember to like, share, subscribe and hit the notification bell. Select all for daily news updates.